반갑습니다. Well, it's Olympic time, and one of the great things about Korea is uh, they show all of the judo matches on TV. Um, you know, one thing that they, you definitely don't get back home, where I'm from in America, is coverage for sports like uh, judo. Maybe some boxing, um, but definitely not judo um, or, or wrestling or anything like that. But here, by the time I get home in the evening uh, from doing whatever I need to do, I can sit down and watch all of the events from the preliminaries all the way to the finals and including uh, the award ceremonies. So it's really awesome. Just, a, just another example of, of how Korea is awesome because they love judo. And so far, Korea has won, South Korea has won two gold medals and North Korea has won one gold medal. So technically if North Korea and South Korea were just Korea, which it kind of should be, um, they'd have three gold medals right now. But also they have, South Korea has a bronze medal. Now that bronze medal uh, comes with a big story of controversy behind it that's going to stay with the sport for, for many years, I think. I say controversy because it really just shocked a lot of people. And since I'm in Korea, uh, it really was a big deal here uh, for Korean fans. Basically what happened was in the quarterfinal match between Japan and South Korea in the under 73 kilogram weight division, uh, the Japanese fighter, his name is, I, I have to read it, uh, Masashi Ebinuma and Junho Cho uh, from South Korea. Uh, it was, it's a classic matchup between uh, Japan and Korea. They're two of the strongest countries in the world for this sport. And what happened is uh, the matches last five minutes and then you have what's called a golden score or a sudden death where the first score immediately stops the match you win. In this golden score or sudden death match, what happened was uh, the Japanese fighter, uh, Ebi Numa, uh, executed a technique that was initially uh, rewarded a score. Uh, it's kind of like a partial score called a yuko. Um, and then that score was taken away uh, because the judges and, and the refereeing committee uh, th had said that it didn't uh, meet the criteria to really be rewarded a yuko score. So it was taken away. So it was 0 0 again. So the sudden death match continued and it went to the judges. And basically, what happens is the ju there's two judges. Um, in the corners and there's a referee in the middle who actually calls the action and they have us they have flags one for the white uniform player one for the blue uniform player and they all three of them raise the flag of the color of the player that they think wins initially unanimously uh, the Korean fighter was uh, given the match he won the match uh, but then that decision was overturned uh, by the refereeing committee the first thing that would be helpful to understand is how refereeing and judging takes place in tournaments such as uh, the Olympic Games or the World Championships and things like that. You have two individuals sitting at opposite corners of the mat uh, in chairs and they are actually called judges and then there's one person on the mat with the players following them around they are the referee. In addition to that uh, the International Judo Federation, which is the governing body for the sport of judo, has what's called the care system. The care system is two cameras set up in locations that the corner uh, judges may not be able to have the best view from, um, or in a place that would make it most beneficial to see the action. Those two cameras are monitored by uh, two individuals that are part of the refereeing uh, commission. So in this match there were two cases where the refereeing commission stepped in and, and overrode the uh, initial call of the judges and the referee that were that are on the mat. So these things happen from time to time, not frequently, but in cases like this uh, the International Judo Federation felt that the refereeing commission needed to step in and overturn uh, the decision, which they did. Now, needless to say, this caused a great deal of uh, disappointment uh, with Korean fans. Uh, I happen to be living and working in Korea at the time, uh, at the moment, so uh, I know that firsthand. 
but also there were a lot of people, a lot of uh, just neutral uh, fans that are watching the games that thought that that was uh, maybe questionable. And to clarify what happened there, the International Judo Federation put out an official statement. In the quarterfinal between two fighters, the Japanese, Ebinuma Masashi, and Cho Jun-ho from the Republic of Korea. During the golden score, the sudden death, three minutes sudden death period where the first score wins, the commission intervened twice. The first time after checking the video by three experts to inform the referees that the impact of the projection of the Japanese could not be valued at level one, Yuko. In other words, he had scored initially, they took it away because it didn't really meet the requirements to, to be, rewarded, be rewarded at Yuko. A second time, when at the end of the golden score, the three referees designated the athlete from the Republic of Korea as the winner. Indeed, the commission explained to the referees that the action, which had been recognized as a Yuko and then lowered in value, was nevertheless the strongest action to be taken into consideration. So that second statement is saying that even though that score that was uh, given to the Japanese player then taken away should still be considered when making the final decision on the match. Now I think that that is where the discrepancy really lies. Whenever there's a match uh, in judo where there's no scores, uh, the judges and the referees will give the match to the fighter who show, shows a greater level of effort in the form of legitimate, meaningful attacks, uh, even though they don't end up scoring, uh, but the fighter showed the initiative to uh, attack the opponent regularly, really showed a greater effort and maybe a better technical proficiency all throughout the match, um, and maybe dominated the action. I think that that's where the question here really lies. Was the Yuko action greater than the dominant play by the Korean player. Uh, if you watch the match, uh, you'll see that, and I think this is what the initial decision was based upon, the Korean player definitely commanded the action. Uh, at the end of the match, he looked fresh, almost like he hadn't even been fighting. The Japanese player was definitely beaten down, was definitely tired. He was injured, his arm was injured, looked like he had been through a war. So it would have made sense under normal circumstances that with no score, which was the case, the match should go to the Japanese player, uh, should go to the Korean player. Hindsight is 2020. It would, they didn't know that they were going to have to make that kind of a decision. But um, given the point, give them the match. Don't give them the point, then give the match to the person who dominated the play, which in my opinion was the Korean player. I do, however, think, in my opinion, my personal opinion, I do think that uh, uh, the Japanese player legitimately scored a Yuko, which in my opinion, should not have been taken away, which then would mean that the Japanese player fairly moved on um, to continue in the games. The great thing about judo, um, and the bad thing about judo, I think is exemplified in this match. And here's the why. You have the decision that was made. That's controversial. It's always going to be controversial and argued. The good part is uh, the way it all ultimately played out between these two human beings that were in the match and the, and the um, extenuating circumstances with all the other people involved, referees, fans, coaches, all that kind of thing. They both went on to win a bronze medal. That being said, uh, I was doing a lot of reading on, on the internet and I came across an article on Yahoo News, which to me is legitimate enough. I don't think they'd be deliberately putting out false, inf uh, be putting out false information. So uh, they had listed some quotes by these two fighters and I wrote them down. I'm going to just read them to you. Uh, Ebinuma, the Japanese fighter, said at the end of the match, I thought I was going to lose, but there was all this support in the spectator seats, the fans, and that allowed me to get this medal, the bronze medal. And then he said, but I'm feeling a bit bad for Cho. So I think he knew um, that, he, that he had lost the match. And I think, you know, to be a spectator and to be actually 
uh, in the game is a very different uh, interaction, and I think that he would know what it would feel like to have a, a, a result reversed on you. Cho from Korea comments, Initially, I thought I had won, but when it was reversed, I was a little sad. He was a little bit more than a little sad, but um, that's his quote. But I had my remaining fights to focus on, and I hoped Abby Numa would get a good result because he beat me. We both won bronze, so I'm happy. So I think that that's great. I think they both felt for each other. At the end, look, bad calls happen in every sport, and uh, they just accepted it and moved on, um, and they both ended up winning an Olympic medal. Bad decisions go either way, no matter what tournament, all the way down to local tournaments with little kids fighting. Um, I think one of the, I think the most classic example of a, of a bad call, um, but the, the appropriate good sportsmanship um, response to it was back in the 2000 Olympics with a Japanese player. Um, he's a very famous player. His name is, I have to read this one too, Shinichi Shinohara. And he was the super heavyweight uh, fighter. And he was a classic matchup with uh, a French player uh, named David Duillet. David Duillet, I don't know if I'm saying his name right or not, is arguably one of the greatest judo players of all time. Um, he won in the Olympics, he won three or four gold medals in world championship games. He just dominated the sport when he was playing. What happened in the 2000 Olympics was David Duillet had performed uh, a throw called Uchimata. Now, there's a counter for that called Uchimata Sukashi, which is basically moving uh, your leg out of the way and using your opponent's momentum to, to continue the mo uh, motion and throw your opponent that was trying to throw you. But what ended up happening was the score was given to uh, the Frenchman, David Duillet. Now this is the single greatest uh, controversial bad call in the history of the sport. I think anyone would probably agree with that, that, that follows judo. And many, many people were just up in arms. It was really unfair. You kind of, it was really stealing uh, Shinohara's medal from him. Um, and after all the dust settled at a press conference, when asked about the situation, Shinohara responded with a classic quote that I think sums everything up in the sportsmanship of judo, regardless of what happens on the mat when you walk away from the mat. And his response was simple, but so key. I lost because I was weak. Duile was strong. That says it all. The matches, in other words, what he was saying is, in that one moment, yes, there was a controversial call, but there's a whole remaining part of that match that I had opportunities to score and I didn't score. It's because I was weaker that day than this guy, David Duile, and he deserves that medal. So, that's my take on the controversial decision uh, at this 2012 Olympics in the under 73 kilogram Japan versus Korea. Um, if you have different perspectives or if you think I'm off on anything like that, I'd be glad to hear your responses. You can private message me or just uh, respond uh, below. But thanks for listening. All the best.